everyone and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting. Um, I went overboard again today. <laughs> I've wanted to do two videos this week and I only managed one because I spent about four or five days just making backgrounds and having fun and then turning them into cards and I managed to make 35 Christmas cards and have enough to make probably 100 to 150 more. Um, on the screen you can see some of the things we're going to be making tonight and we are going to be having so much fun. I did a ton of experimentation, played with lots of um, different techniques and had such an amazing time and created such beautiful projects. Well, I think they're beautiful anyways, and I can't wait to share them with you. I know it's a longer video tonight, but I hope you go away from this with tons of inspiration and excitement to go and create a whole bunch of cards yourself. Now, I've done Christmas cards tonight, but you absolutely don't need to. You can do whatever you feel like, and I can keep going. I could have seriously kept going with this and done so many more. Now, it is a cheap crafting night, so we are going to use baby white. This is the sort of star, one of the stars of the show. These three things here are the main key ingredients to our crafting. So we got baby wipes. I've got my premium photo paper. Again, I'm sorry if you're getting sick of the photo paper, but I am in love and I'm coming up with more and more and more techniques. I've got another technique with photo paper coming up next week as well that hopefully will blow your mind and give you lots of inspiration. And then food coloring. This is going to be how we're going to color all of our cards. I don't know if you're like me, but my ink refills are precious. And doing anything where I'm going to use up quite a bit of ink refills is just disheartening and scary. So I went on Amazon. I found these ink refills. They are the cheapest ones I could find. They cost me about six pounds for a pack of 24 colors. And I kid you not, they work exactly the same as ink refills. They are just as concentrated, but they cost you pennies and I have heaps left over. So I will put the links for everything I used today in the description box so you can find exactly what I used if you want to find the same thing. But honestly, find the cheapest, cheapest food coloring. And it doesn't matter, you're not eating it, so you don't need to worry about what's in it. We are only going to use it for decorating. I'm not gonna put this into my kitchen, so I don't care what I'm doing with it. I'm just having fun. Make sure you've got some gloves unless you want really stained fingers because this will stick into your skin beautifully. <laughs> so I've got some gloves there and I'm picking out all the blues. I'm starting with the blues. When you don't know what to do, go with a color family. So get all the same color, just different shades and you'll be good to go. Now I'm starting with two baby wipes. I did find, however, that three was the kind of key one. I really like three in the end. So after these first few goes, I then move on to using three. I just found it a bit more juicier and a bit more squishier. And what I'm doing is I'm putting them down onto my baking tray, which is not again used in my kitchen. It is only for my craft office. And I am stretching out those baby wipes so they're nice and flat. And you'll see what it looks like when they're nice and crinkled. But when they're nice and flat, we get these beautiful crisp images with all that color popping through. And all I'm doing here is just plopping down dots of food coloring. I'm not doing any rhyme or reason. I'm just sticking them down, grabbing my photo paper, and then just playing. So you'll want to have a go at pressing it down. If you've got a brayer, a brayer can help add even pressure. You can test how the pressure goes with your hands. So if you do a light pressure, you get that kind of impression. And usually the first impression is quite concentrated because it is quite concentrated on the baby wipes. So if you want to get the color moving and flowing a bit more, you can add a bit of water and then that will help lighten the color. That will help make it move across the baby wipe a bit easier. And as you can see here on this little flip, it's nice and kind of spread out a bit more. Now, if you want more color, more background filling, then you can go ahead and push it down multiple times into that baby wipe. And the amazing thing with photo paper is it kind of sucks in that color and holds it. And it holds it wherever you've got that color going on. So you can kind of push it down multiple times and pick up color on top of color. And you can leave it to dry and come back and add more color if you want as well. If it's not picking up enough at that point in time, just let it dry and you can come back in again. Now I'm using photo pre premium photo paper because I find that I can really get it saturated. I can get it really wet. I can do lots with it. Now to show you the contrast between normal cardstock and paper, this here in my hand is regular white cardstock, 350 GSM. On the left is the photo paper. I use the exact same pressure, I use the exact same method, and you can see how much more vibrant the color is on photo paper. It's designed to hold color, and my word, it holds color. It holds texture as well. So you're gonna pick up some of that texture from the background. As you can see here, I did some purples, blues, and pinks, and you just get a gorgeous look to it. You can get layers and dimension and all kinds of loveliness. I'm so excited about photo paper. Now, if you want some more character and dimension, scrunch it. Just scrunch it up. If your color is getting a bit too mixed, getting a bit too merged, scrunch it. That's a great time to do that with. 
So as you can see, I've scrunched it and I'm pushing it down and it picks up those scrunches. It is so stunning. It's just like a photo. You get that three dimensional look to it. It's so amazing. This is why I love photo paper. I have gone mental. I'm not kidding you guys. I have got about 300 sheets, no four, at least 500 sheets of photo paper next to me in my office. I've just gone for it. I've, I'm, I've just bought loads. I've even bought the Amazon uh, cheapo paper just to try out for you guys, which I will do probably in the next video as well. So when your little background's getting a bit messy, scrunch it up and use it again. Now you don't have to scrunch it and then put your photo paper onto it. You can do the reverse. You can scrunch it into your hand and dab it onto your photo paper and you get a completely different look and a completely different kind of texture and background to work with. And again, you can use whatever colors tickle your fancy. You want to avoid making mud, so you want to avoid colors that are going to merge together and make like brown. Uh, so make sure you're paying attention to the color wheel. If you find that your color is running a little bit dry, it's not as saturated or as dark as you want, you want a bit more dimension, you can just take the food coloring and stick it straight onto that baby wipe and then you can go ahead and tap it on. And look at this amazing textured background that I'm getting. And it stays shiny like this. And for me, with this premium photo paper, I only need to leave it about five to 10 minutes and it's fully dry. And sometimes the back of the photo paper is a bit wet and messy, so I'll just flip it over and dry it with a microfiber cloth and just kind of wipe off the back. But the front of it will dry within five to 10 minutes for me. So I have boshed out backgrounds like you wouldn't believe. I just kept going and going and going. And then I had to stop to pick up the kids from school, I had to stop to make dinner, but I just made background after background and I didn't have to worry about having tons of surface space to let this dry on because it just dried. It's amazing stuff to work with. If you don't have photo paper, get it. <laughs> Honestly, I have got about five videos now where you can look and see all the different cool things you can do with photo paper and I'm gonna keep going because I love this stuff, I love working with it and now my office is full of a whole bunch of it so I'm gonna keep going. Now obviously you don't need to do just dots, you could do lines. And when you do lines, you can then do all kinds of different things. You can do plaid, you can do diagonals, you can, you know, the world is your oyster. So I've just done straight lines, you could do squiggly lines, you could do lines and dots, which I also do, which I don't show on the screen, but you'll see, probably see the, the leftover bits. So here's some like kind of plaid. Um, and you can just keep pushing it down. So if you don't like how it looks, you don't like that there's not enough color or the lines don't look great, just stick it down again. And honestly, you won't be disappointed. I think I only tossed maybe one or two of these backgrounds, if that, because if I didn't like it, I added more. And if I still didn't like it, then I added something totally different on the top of that. As long as the colors go together, you can keep going and keep adding and you will get beautiful results. So here's just throwing it all over the place. I just went up, down, left, right, and got a really crazy cool background. I've got sort of an extra complicated plaid background. I've got some more lines. So easy to do, so simple. And again, if you wanna dilute those lines a bit more, then just spray some water onto those baby wipes and it'll help kind of merge it. And if you're finding you're struggling, you can always flip the baby wipes over as well. And don't forget that you can use the backside of the baby wipes and they might contain better lines. Now it's just sharing with you just there with that blue. That was the red ones I did and I didn't quite like it so I just put it over top of some blue and got a totally different color. Now in my playing around, I realized you can take stencils and you can put the stencil on top of the baby wipe and then you can press down and you can lift up the pattern through the stencil and get this sort of rainbow multicolor look but with more defined shapes. So I absolutely love it. And if you press too hard, it does squish through the stencil because it is quite a juicy baby wipe. Um, and if you don't have enough liquid, then you might find you don't get enough color coming through. But honestly, just keep playing and you will have so much fun and you will create such stunning things that you didn't realize you could do. So here's my kind of crazy backgrounds. You can die cut those out. Um, you can shape, make them into small little panels on your cards. And then I've got these beautiful stenciled colored areas and I love them. Now I forgot to press record on this but I went ahead and took one from two days earlier and I covered it back with water. I just wanted to share with you if you've done a background, your baby wipes dried out and you're thinking oh I'm just gonna have to toss it, you can actually just wet it again with water. Food coloring is water reactive, food coloring is lovely and safe and you can just reactivate it with water. It won't be as vibrant as the first time but you can still get lots of color off of it. So if you feel like, oh, I really liked that pattern, I really like those colors, just re-wet it and you can get some more prints out of it. 
Now here are some different stencils. One got a little bit messy, one's okay. I kept them all because honestly, when you die cut them down or if you wanna go ahead and do this and add some more color to it, I'm using the same colors. I've just re-wet the same wet wipes that I had before that when I made this panel, I just re-wet it and then I picked up some of the background and it was lighter than the first time I did it. So if you don't like your pattern, don't throw it out because you might decide to change it up a bit more. Now this one, I didn't do any prints. I just put down my food coloring and then I put down my stencils. So I've got just pure ink underneath that, pure food coloring. And now I'm getting really vibrant prints. I'm getting super, super vibrant prints with lots of color definition between those dots. And it is stunning. It looks like water drops, looks like kind of like snowflakes possibly. Again, you're not gonna get a crisp, perfect image because you're working with a stencil and baby wipes, but you get a gorgeous background. And if you're getting some that's seeping through the stencil, just grab a tissue, like a plain dry tissue, and just lightly brush over top of that stencil and you'll pick up all the excess ink that's come off between the last stencil and then you can go ahead and do the next one. Now, I love this. I love when you just randomly stick it down. Even if you think, oh, the pattern's not gonna match, just do it anyways. It'll be great fun and you'll get a lovely result. I've got some dots here. I was going for kind of like a snow effect. Didn't really work out as like snow, but it was still gorgeous nonetheless. And here you can see all my prints that I did. I did absolutely tons with this blue. It was so gorgeous. And again, I've got so much of this food coloring left. I've got absolutely tons of those colors left in those bottles. And I probably did 150 maybe <laughs> of these. I just went to town. I honestly couldn't stop. And that's why my video took so long to film. Now this one, I didn't like the dots. So I, again, I just stuck it straight back into the same color palette and picked up background. I did black and pink and purple on the left there, which kind of turned out green. Black food coloring doesn't really work just to warn you. But I'm just carry, going through all my little prints and sharing with you what I did. I did squiggles and dots just there. So you can see my squiggles and dots and how they kind of progressed. And then again, when I wet it, on the right is the paper, on the left is the photo paper, or sorry, the card stuck on the right. And you can just see the vibrant colors show up so much better in photo paper and you get that beautiful glossy shine. Now next weekend, I am working with matte photo paper. So make sure you watch that one. If you're not a fan of glossy, you might be a fan of matte photo paper. So here are all my prints. I really went to town with the teal, purple, and pink. They are clearly my favorite color combo. I use them nonstop. I've got some of the ones where I just scrunched up the wipes at the end, and then I went for these ones. Now these ones I am planning to use like some sunflower stamps on top of, doing some kind of fun, really bright, vibrant, happy birthday cards with those ones. I've got such big plans for them. Now here's circles. Circles didn't work. <laughs> voice circles I, but I tried a whole bunch of different patterns and that's the fun of it is it's a great way to just sit down and be creative and I'm telling you I kid you not guys oh I feel a bit embarrassed I've watched about nine movies this week I played nine movies on my computer while I was creating because I had that level of time honestly crazy now I decided to go ahead and make a card that I made for a wow using my last technique uh, with embossing ink. And I decided to recreate that with this background and create a whole bunch of Christmas cards. I did 31 of these Christmas cards. So I die cut out all of my baubles. These are from Pretty Gets Gritty. I will link them down below and there is a discount code. So if you want a discount on these dies, it's down in my description box. Make sure you put in, I think it's Sasha 10 or something for 10 or 15% off. I can't remember. I'll put it down below. But I went ahead and die cut out 31 of these little bobbles in my sort of favorite patterns, the most sort of distinct uh, striking patterns. And then I backed them all with two pieces of thick cardstock. So they're kind of like a nice, thick, chunky, dimensional embellishment. To kind of make that edge pop a bit more, I felt it was quite white with all those layers behind it. So I've got the three layers, I've got the photo paper and the two layers of cardstock. I went ahead and grabbed some Distress Ink in a similar color. So this is the Uncharted Marina. Marina, I never say that one right. And I'm dusting the edges. So you can see on the left, the previously what the left was the one with the color on this one is the right with the color, but it just pops more. It looks so much better when you've got that edge done. So off camera, I went ahead and inked up all my purpley ones with picked raspberry and then all my blue ones with the uncharted Marina, I think. <laughs> um, and I love how they look. I love that edge being done. And you can see here when I tilt it on the side, it's all like a nice blue teal color rather than white. Now I went and cut myself some backgrounds. So I've got, these are just about, I think a centimeter smaller than my card base. 
and I'm going to do the edges in gold with my gold embossing powder. I wanted to use my gold embossing powder rather than a pigment ink because then that way it's dry instantly as soon as I've heat set it. So I'm going to go ahead and just slightly drag my ink pad along the edges. This is a clear embossing ink, so it's a sticky ink. And I've just dragged it across those edges and then I'm going to go ahead and dip it into my embossing powder and then heat set it. And I'm doing that on all my panels. And you get this gorgeous sort of rough, raggedy gold edge and that shine really pops and my sentiment will be in the same gold so it will kind of go nicely together and flow nicely together. So I've got my teal done and I've got my purples done and ready to go. Now if you don't have cardstock that matches your cards, you can take your ink pads and you can just kind of swipe them over your cardstock and color them that way. Or you could even try doing it with your food coloring. Just dip your sponge into a, into the food coloring and just kind of rub it over your cardstock and see if you can get a nice color match to go with your baubles. So here are my 31 cards. I've got my baubles all glued onto the front of them and onto my panels, which are glued onto my card bases. And then I went and made 31 bows out of some sheer ribbon that I bought off the of Sheen for really cheap. If I can find the link for that, I'll stick that down for you. And then I got a whole bunch of gems in my stash. So I just grabbed all those gems and started gluing them on with my hot glue gun. And to finish them off, I did Merry Christmas, which I just stamped on some strips of the same colored cardstock. And then I just cut them out with scissors. So a really easy way to make a whole bunch of Christmas cards using those gorgeous backgrounds and they just steal the show. They're so stunning and I love the little bit of gold on the edge of my cardstock. It just kind of makes it pop a little bit more and ties it into the sentiment. So I've got all these Christmas cards now that I can hand out. They'll be a bit bulky for posting but I kind of don't care. I'm so proud of them and this one is my favorite. I don't know how this flower turned out so nice but I made sure when I die cut it to get that flower right in the center of that die cut. Now every one of those die cuts I made sure to save the backgrounds of and I made sure to die cut those die cuts right out of the middle of the panel and I'm going to share with you why in just a minute. Now I've got these new pens in my stash. They are so amazing. I've got a set of acrylic marker pens, paint pens, and I got a set of these uh, glitter acrylic paint pens pens with like the fine tip point so just the same as all the other ones that I've got in my stash that I've been using loads but these are metallic not glitter sorry metallic and they are amazing so I swatched them all on black and on white and the top ones kind of look all the same but when you look at them close up you can see they're orange red yellow they're different um, but they are stunning and they work really nice. And then I've also got these acrylic paint pens. And these are quite fun. They've got quite a fat end to them. So they're not for detailed fine stuff. But they are double, like they're dual. So you get double the colors out of this set. You get an insane amount of colors in one set. And again, I swatched them on black and white so you can see what they look like. Now these uh, pens are sold almost everywhere. There's um, an AliExpress link. They're on Amazon and I think almost every country that has Amazon. Um, the company were also really generous and gave me a discount code for some of the metallic pens in some of the countries. So I'll put those discount codes and links down below in the description box if you want to check them out. Um, they'll be there. And the acrylic paint pens are on offer, I think. Now, this is an, another amazing thing. Take your stencil, put it over your photo paper and trace it. And how amazing does that look? And it dries almost instantly. Those pens get absorbed straight into that photo paper and it is so pretty. You get this metallic shine on top of the gorgeous photo paper shine that you've already got, which has also got the texture from all your printing. So an amazing way to add even more to those cards. Now, if you don't want to trace, you don't have any stencils, you can also take pens like this and you can just kind of slap them <laughs> onto itself and you can get like splatters. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. You're going to just kind of dab your end of your ink pen because these are ones that you have to like kind of squish up and down to activate. And when you do that, you can make them quite juicy and then you can kind of flick that ink onto your background as well so you can get like a splattered background. Now you can do the same with the acrylic paint pens. You can trace through your stencils and create beautiful borders. So I found that this was too much if I covered the whole entire panel with these pens. I felt like it took away the shine and the sheen because these are matte and the panels are obviously shiny and glossy. But if you do a nice border, it's really beautiful. You can get like a really gorgeous sort of matte border. Obviously you could use paint as well if that's all you've got. but. It's amazing when you take these two products and combine them together. So I did the acrylic uh, paint pen and then I did the metallic pen 
and traced it. And now I've got the metallic shine over that kind of matte finish and it is so pretty. Now I had to stop because we're going on Friday night and I'm still not done my video because I spent the whole week playing. So I had to stop myself and I created those kind of extra elements onto my backgrounds and then I've created about three cards for you to share kind of some ideas of what you could do with them. But my mind was going and going and going with more ideas. Now you can also take your die and trace your die, which then gives you a gorgeous border. And this is nice for when you want to do a shaker card because on shaker cards it's quite nice not just to have a hole cut out but to kind of have that little bit of an extra layer. So I use the paint pen and the metallic pen to trace my die and give the illusion of an extra layer onto that panel. And all I did was uh, put some acetate there behind that panel and then I filled sequins underneath like a standard shaker card. This one here, I love. I just did a simple Merry Christmas on the front of it with a snowflake die. And the snowflake die, I think, is from the same set as the bobble set. And the Christmas is from the Trinity Stamps Christmas die and stamp set. So I'll link all that down below for you. You can check it out. These are all my leftovers. I can't wait to get playing with them and doing more techniques and having more fun with these. Hopefully, I'll post some stuff on my Instagram, but I'm really terrible at it. But I do intend to try and post extra cards on there. So all my links to my other social medias, my Facebook group, and my Instagram will be down in the description box for you. But I hope you enjoyed tonight and got lots of inspiration and you crack out those food colorings and photo paper and have fun with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you come and join me next weekend. Take care. Bye.